Most of us are familiar with the standard narrative of how the universe began. There was an infinitely dense point of infinite temperature, with no size called a singularity. This singularity exploded, creating all the space, energy, and matter that we consider to be our universe in an event called the Big Bang. Between 10 to the power of negative 36 seconds and 10 to the power of negative 32 seconds, space expanded exponentially, growing much larger in size. After this period, space continued to expand but at a much slower rate, and eventually, we see the universe that we observe today. This is the inflationary Big Bang theory, the most popular and broadly accepted theory of how the universe began. But for a few physicists, the premier theory doesn't paint an accurate picture of the evolution of our universe. Rather, they say that the universe existed before that point, stretching forever into the past as well as the future. While the universe is expanding today, it was contracting in the time before the Big Bang. In this picture, the Big Bang isn't so much a bang but a bounce, a moment when a shrinking universe reversed course and began to grow. According to their theory, the universe could bounce again. Today's expansion could be followed by collapse in the far future, followed by another bounce. Some physicists have suggested this bouncing could be infinite. This, of course, is counter to the way most cosmologists see it, where everything started with the Big Bang. But what is noteworthy here is this is not the only theory that dares to challenge the pinnacle theory of cosmology. Renowned physicist Brian Cox also challenges the Big Bang theory, asserting that something cannot emerge from nothing. Adding a bit of tension, the James Webb Telescope has made a bunch of unexpected discoveries that contradict the notion that the Big Bang marked the beginning of the universe. All of these raise a question. If the Big Bang wasn't the beginning of the cosmos, then what was it? Could the universe start with a bounce or something else entirely? Join us as we dig deep into one of the thorniest issues in physics. The idea that the universe had a beginning, or a year day without a yesterday, as it was originally known, goes all the way back to Georges Lemaitre in 1927. Although it's still a defensible position to state that the universe likely had a beginning, that stage of our cosmic history has very little to do with the hot Big Bang that described our early universe. Although many laypersons and even a minority of professionals still cling to the idea that the Big Bang means the very beginning of it all, that definition is outdated. The Big Bang now is not the birth of time and space. We know that today, in 2023. In fact, there's a ton of evidence that points to a non-singular origin of our universe. We never achieved those arbitrarily high temperatures. There's a cutoff. Instead, our universe is best described by an inflationary period that occurred prior to the Big Bang, and the Big Bang is the aftermath of what occurred at the end of inflation. Let's walk through what that looked like. During inflation, the universe was completely empty. There were no particles, no matter, no photons, just empty space itself. That empty space had a huge amount of energy in it at every location, with the exact amount of energy slightly fluctuating over time by about one part in 30,000 on average. As the universe inflates, expanding in a rapid, relentless fashion, those fluctuations get stretched to larger scales while new small-scale fluctuations are created atop them. This superposition of fluctuations of small scales atop intermediate scales atop large scales atop superhorizon scales is one of the defining predictive features of cosmic inflation. This continues as long as inflation goes on, but inflation will come to an end randomly and not in all locations at once. In fact, if you lived in an inflating universe, you'd likely experience a nearby region where inflation came to an end while the space between you and it expanded exponentially. For a brief instant, you might even be able to detect what happens at the start of a Big Bang before that region disappeared entirely from view. In an initially relatively small region, perhaps no bigger than a human-sized hamster ball, but perhaps much larger, the energy inherent to space gets converted into matter and radiation. The conversion process is relatively fast, taking approximately 10 to the power of negative 33 seconds or so, a brief amount of time, but nonetheless one that is not instantaneous. As the energy bound up in space itself gets converted into particles, antiparticles, photons, and more, 
the temperature starts to rapidly rise from just a few degrees above absolute zero to perhaps 10 to the power of 20 Kelvin or so over that same brief time interval. Because the amount of energy that gets converted is so large, everything will be moving close to the speed of light. All quanta will behave as radiation, with so much kinetic energy inherent to them, regardless of whether the particles are massless or massive. It doesn't matter under these conditions. This conversion process is known as reheating and signifies when inflation comes to an end and the stage known as the hot Big Bang begins. In terms of the expansion speed, you'll witness a tremendous change from all prior behavior. When the hot Big Bang first commences in an inflationary universe, space expands exponentially, with more distant regions accelerating away relentlessly as time goes on. But when inflation ends, the universe reheats, and the hot Big Bang starts. More distant regions will now recede from you more and more slowly as time goes on. From an outside perspective, the part of the universe where inflation ends sees the expansion rate there drop, while the inflating regions surrounding it see no such drop. Under inflation, the distance to any object would double after a certain amount of time, and once that same amount of time elapses, the distance doubles yet again, and again, and again. The process is relentless. But once the Big Bang begins, all of that changes, as the expanding universe immediately slows down once the first moment of expansion elapses. Probability-wise, it's extremely likely that from the perspective of whatever region of inflating space you're in prior to the Big Bang, you'll experience inflation ending in nearby regions many times. These locations where inflation ends will quickly fill with matter, antimatter, and radiation, and expand more slowly than the still inflating regions do leaving you in the inflating region as a typical region within space-time dominating its volume. These regions where hot Big Bangs occur will expand away from all the other locations where inflation still goes on exponentially, meaning they will very quickly recede from one another's view. In the standard inflationary picture, because of this expansion rate change, there's virtually no chance that any two universes where separate hot Big Bangs occur will ever collide or interact. Finally, the region where we will come to live gets cosmically lucky, and inflation comes to an end for us. The energy that was inherent to space itself gets converted to a hot, dense, and almost uniform sea of particles. The only imperfections and the only departures from uniformity correspond to the quantum fluctuations that existed and were stretched across the universe during inflation. The positive energy quantum fluctuations will correspond to initially overdense regions while the negative energy fluctuations get converted into initially underdense regions. But that's still enough to serve as the eventual seeds of cosmic structure. We cannot observe these density fluctuations today, as they were when the universe first underwent the hot Big Bang. There are no visual signatures we can access from that early on. The first one we've ever accessed comes from 380,000 years later, after they've undergone countless interactions. Even at that, we can extrapolate back what the initial density fluctuations were and find something extremely consistent with the story of cosmic inflation. The temperature fluctuations that are imprinted on the first picture of the universe, the cosmic microwave background, give us confirmation of how the Big Bang began. However, there are a lot of inconsistencies between the cosmic microwave background and our current model of cosmology. We're missing something. These can be summarized in four anomalies. First, on very large scales, the universe isn't acting like we think it should. Second, light from the cosmic microwave background will be lensed by matter in between us and the cosmic microwave background. This means that matter acts like a giant lens, bending and changing the amplitude of the light behind it. The amount that this happens is not consistent with our current model of the universe. This is such a significant problem that it has sometimes been called a crisis for cosmology. Third, the two hemispheres of the cosmic microwave background sky have different average temperatures. This doesn't make a lot of sense since we believe that the universe should have started out uniform on average. And last, the value of the Hubble constant, which describes how fast the universe is expanding, is different whether we measure it from the cosmic microwave background or from more nearby Cepheid stars. Taken together, these anomalies mean we're missing something fundamental in our understanding of the universe. 
The answer may lie in loop quantum cosmology. Loop quantum cosmology arises from loop quantum gravity. In loop quantum gravity, gravity itself is made of particles called quanta. These quanta come together to form the fabric of space and time. In this model of the universe, there is a smallest size of space itself, the Planck scale, or 10 to the power of negative 35 meters. Nothing, not even space itself, can be smaller than this. This means that the Big Bang couldn't exist in a universe with loop quantum cosmology. The universe could never get down to an infinitely small, infinitely dense point. Close to the Big Bang, when the universe was very small, really weird things happen. Mathematically, infinities start to arise and threaten to tear the fabric of space-time itself. It's at these locations where loop quantum gravity can come in to provide corrections to the physics we already know. As Dr. Abay Ushteker at Penn State University, who led a study showing that the universe started in a bounce rather than a bang, said, gee at such places, one has to use. Quantum Physics As we work backward in time toward the Big Bang, we go from the universe we know and understand to a universe that is too small to make sense. This is where loop quantum gravity comes in. According to Abay Ushteker, as we work backward through the history of the universe, we see that the universe never gets smaller than a very tiny, but non-zero size. It gets squeezed through a minimum volume, and then it starts expanding again. The Big Bang is replaced with a big bounce. But unlike many physicists, Abay Ushteker doesn't believe the universe will end in a big crunch. Rather, his research points to a universe that expands infinitely. If the Big Bang is a big bounce, this leaves open a tantalizing question. What was the universe like before the Big Bang? While we don't have enough evidence to definitively say, one interesting model posits a cyclic universe, a universe with an infinite number of bounces. But even in this case, it's important to know that the universe's current expansion means we don't have to worry about another bounce for a long time. Even if it does eventually happen, we can take solace in the fact that at least the next bounce would be well beyond the lifetimes of our current universe. The Big Bang Theory has long been the cornerstone of our understanding of the universe's origins, depicting a singular, explosive event that gave rise to all space, time, matter, and energy approximately 13.8 billion years ago. According to this model, the universe began as a singularity, an infinitely dense and hot point, before expanding rapidly in an event known as inflation, which smoothed out any irregularities and set the stage for the cosmos we observe today. However, the Big Bang theory, despite its widespread acceptance, is not without its challengers. Among these are alternative theories that propose different scenarios for the universe's inception and evolution, including the possibility that the universe has no beginning or end, but rather undergoes a series of cyclic phases. One of the most intriguing alternatives is the theory of a cyclic or bouncing universe. This concept suggests that the universe undergoes endless cycles of expansion and contraction, with each Big Bang being preceded by a big crunch, the collapse of the universe into a dense state, followed by a rebound or bounce. This idea finds some of its roots in ancient philosophies, but has been given new life by modern theoretical physics, particularly through advances in loop quantum gravity, LQG, and other approaches to quantum cosmology. LQG, which attempts to reconcile general relativity with quantum mechanics, posits that space-time is not a smooth continuum, but is instead composed of discrete, finite loops. These loops form a granular structure at the smallest scales, potentially eliminating the singularities predicted by classical general relativity. In a loop quantum cosmological framework, as the universe contracts and approaches a state of extreme density, the quantum properties of space-time prevent it from collapsing into a singularity. Instead, a repulsive quantum force comes into play, causing the universe to bounce back into an expansion phase. This big bounce replaces the traditional Big Bang as the origin of the observable universe. The implications of a cyclic universe extend far beyond a simple oscillation between expansion and contraction. If true, it suggests that the universe we inhabit is but one in an infinite series of universes, each with its own unique properties and histories. This eternal recurrence might help explain some of the fine-tuned aspects of our universe, as conditions favorable to the development of life could arise naturally given enough cycles.
Additionally, a cyclic model could address several long-standing cosmological puzzles that challenge the standard Big Bang paradigm. For instance, the horizon problem, the question of how different regions of the universe, which have not had time to interact, exhibit such uniform temperatures, can be more naturally resolved if these regions have undergone numerous cycles of mixing and thermalization. Similarly, the flatness problem, which concerns the precise balance of the universe's initial conditions to allow for a flat, geometrically simple universe, may be explained if the universe undergoes repeated cycles that drive it toward flatness over time.